Hi, my name is Kelly McCormack. Hi, I'm talking to Kelly, and I'm very excited about her independent film, Barn Wedding. So tell me, what was the inspiration, Kelly? Wow, the inspiration uh, was kind of one of the most unique uh, projects that's ever kind of sparked. Uh, my, it, the inspiration was created by myself and Emily Coots, my co-star, and I were in an acting class, and we came up with an improv, and it was so explosive that we decided it should be the climax scene of a feature film. So that's kind of what the inspiration was, was this, this, this best friend relationship and this very tumultuous, intense, high-stakes scene, and we played it out in class, and we're like, well, that feels like the climax film of a movie, so I uh, went away and, and, and wrote the movie, <laughs> and that's the inspiration. I found it so funny and I love the relationships between the women and the men as well because you don't really see a lot of that in movies yeah uh, yeah I mean I wanted to make a movie that reflected my friends group which is a bunch of young artists living in Toronto um, where there's kind of not these like you know everyone is is is, is trying something different and in terms of like sexuality it's not this like big issue it's kind of like people try different things and people are kind of more a bit more laid back and um, yeah the female characters the two leads Jesse and Emma who I play Jesse and Emily Coots plays Emma our relationship is uh, an a one that I think a lot of young women can relate to but it is not often seen in movies because I think in in bigger blockbuster movies they want to make those relationships very clear in boxes and I'm not I'm kind of like anti boxes well, I love the fact that you weren't in a box, and I love the fact that it wasn't what you usually expect from a women movie, namely a rom-com, which is yeah. what they're constantly asking for. Yeah, yeah. This is a serious drama. I mean, there's humor to it, but it was like some major stuff going on. Yeah, I really, I, I'm really obsessed with that kind of ambiguous line between comedy and drama because, um, you know, unlike the movies when so the the movie is about these all these people gathering in a barn in the winter to um play out to, to prepare for this wedding and the question is like should these people are getting married or not and um the truth truth be told it unlike the movies when people are under stress they're very poor communicators and 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 when 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 stuff goes down that's really stressful sometimes it can be really funny because that's how we deal with things so I was interested in, in, in walking that fine line in my writing and trying to write surface conversations where it sounds like they're just talking about something pedestrian but underneath there's a lot of subtext and a lot of characters interacting not really being honest about how they're feeling but that's so that's truly like that's this kind of polite Canadian thing is a real thing and this is like people don't come out unlike the movies they don't come out and say like that big zinger line where you're like, this is how I feel. We kind of just, like something weird happens and we kind of deal with it and then we laugh about it. So we've had a lot of people say, it's like a drama, but it's also so funny. I'm like, yeah, well that's life. Like the stuff that happens that's drama filled in our life can you kind of just laugh at sometimes. I did have a few laughing scenes and it really <laughs> appealed to me as a woman trying to figure out marriage and mm. the rest of her life, which is yes. always hard. You guys had such great chemistry. Are all of you friends in real life? I know that some of you are sci-fi channel people and that's how you know each other. Defiance! <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this movie was made very uniquely because we actually cast the, the group of people, we, we decided who we wanted to work with before I even wrote the script. Mm -hmm. So we um, developed it, we developed the idea of the story in Meisner class, which is a type of acting class, and we just picked people where I was like, we knew we wanted to work with Laura Jean Karstecki, Chris Hayes, Caleb Alexander, Brett Donahue, Emily Coots, Kate Corbett, we got them all together. And I sat there with Sean, the director, and, and we just paired people up, and I was like, oh, and we just had them kind of workshop Meisner technique, and I was like, they kind of seem like brothers, or they seem like estranged friends, or yada da. So these are all my friends, and so it, that I was writing I love writing for people I love knowing how someone talks and being able to write for that character um, so that was a huge pleasure for me and and yeah it was like I knew how far I could take it and I knew that Emily and I as friends we were also co-producers on the film I knew that we could really go there with each other and delve deep into a, a relationship that's obviously been in the works for a long time and they're best friends and there's this kind of like fine line between how close we are and how close we get and what is actually happening between us and it's not even always divulged to the audience exactly what's happening between us but that's what I like it's kind of like voyeuristic looking on the weekend of us yeah well, I really enjoyed the film, and Thanks. I enjoyed you guys together. Now, as a young woman, it is so hard to get our stories on the screen. What was the process for you to get your story on the screen? Well, um, I struggle with this a lot. I mean, all women do. It's it's not a it's not it's a real thing. The struggle is real. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's you. If I wrote a, if I wrote this movie and I tried to sell it, people would be like, 
people would try and make it completely not what it what I wanted it to be. Um, they would want the women to have a, a, a different type of um, end game or a different type of motivation to do things. You know, it's like all about the romantic interest and trying to make it a rom com and trying mm -hmm. to make put people in boxes and. Um, I was lucky that I knew I was writing this film and we were making it in-house as an independent film. And Sean and Emily, Sean Benson, the director, and Emily Coots, the lead and my co-producer, and along with Sean, they were like, Kelly, do your thing. And they let me go and write this film for two months and I, I gave it, they gave it back to them and they were like, everything, all those weird fine lines, especially with the female characters, where it's an undefined sexuality and an undefined, um, you know, like the things that we want we're kind of outspoken about and don't really you know we're, and and these questions of of marriage like i when i wrote the film i think that i was uh, maybe maybe dating someone i was like not wanting to get hitched with i don't know <laughs> but like it's a bit of a cynical nod to this idea that the only thing women should want to do is have this picturesque wedding and this pinterest instagram worthy wedding when like there's and I say this line in the film like no one is forcing you to do this like you're walking towards something that's clearly making you unhappy and you're so focused on how your memories look as opposed to how they feel mm -hmm. and I think with women it's like we can be these badass independent chicas who are like walking around you know doing all these amazing things and then at one point we get all the time like well when are you gonna get married and when are you gonna have kids and then your biological clock shows up and you're like oh god I actually you know it's, it's hard it's like yes. a, it's a lot of like push and pull like and and, and weddings especially, there's this pressure, you know, and I find that there are these like checkpoints and another character says this in the film, I see my friends meet a guy and then they, they move in together, check, then they get married, then they get a dog, check, and then they get married, check, and then they have a kid, check, and it's check, 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 check. And this is literal, that's a literally line from the <laughs> film. Uh, that I, I I always look at my, my female friends a lot and also my male friends because I, I don't really, I like to think that the struggle is hard for both genders, mm -hmm. which it is. Uh, in terms of just just making us go wait a second like who's who's making us do this like why can't we define a reality for ourselves that is our own and my character in particular people always ask me like maybe i'm giving away spoilers or whatever but am i allowed to do that you don't want to spoil it because i want everyone to see the okay. movie <laughs> never mind never mind well then i won't <laughs> but uh, uh i'm just saying that i can speak from my own experience in terms of like sexuality or what a relationship can look like we have this like, black and white idea of like you have this type of relationship this heteronormative monogamous relationship thing and that you're not supposed to look at your friends or the people around you in any other kind of way and I just I I don't know what has happened in my life where I kind of feel freed from feeling that there's one way to do something mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I was playing with and to be honest if I had sent this to a big studio they'd be like this won't read with any this this won't this this will resonate with a lot of people but it's not it's very hard to package mm -hmm. and that's the whole point it's not put in a package <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Well, I thought it was very charming. Thanks. Now, for those who are not here in L.A. for the Dances with Films, mm -hmm. what opportunity do they have to enjoy bar and wedding? Ooh. Well, there's so many things in the works that I'm not allowed to talk about. Ooh. It's a secret. Secret. Uh, but uh, we at least know that we'll have a theatrical in January. Um, in which continent and by whom, I cannot say. <laughs> uh, but it should be available at the least by January, which will be great. Um, we're hoping for a big theatrical release. We had Dances with Films was such an amazing festival to be at, and we had so many people asking us about it. So it's like, I'm kind of just, I had a meeting 10 minutes ago to talk about where this film is going, so stay tuned. Huh. But we're on like Twitter, like Barn Wedding 2014. I'm on Twitter, Kel McCormack, that's K-E-L-M-C-C-O-R-M-A-C-K on Twitter. Um, but you know, like, I will be announcing it. I'm a big, like, publicity press, <laughs> you know, fiend. So <laughs> it's hard, it will be hard not to know where it is, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have to ask you, as a bit of a sci-fi nerd, mm. I know you're on Defiance. Mm. What was that like working with everybody? You guys look like you had such a good time on the set. That set, well, um, I wasn't one of the series regulars. I kind of came mm. on, played a character. Um, I don't want to ruin just in case you guys are watching the second season, but um, something happens to me. Whoa! Um, I that set is very. It's shot in Toronto. A lot of my friends are on that show. Um, you walked on set and you just feel like this vibe is so cool. Like everyone is in love with each other, and that's just a really great vibe of of friendship. And and you can see how 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 um present the cast is on social media and how much they're allowed to post photos and talk about things and and I'll get texts from um, like um, uh, Trenna Keating is a good friend of mine and Anna Hopkins and um, all those actors like will send me text messages of, of like 
set like new set pieces and stuff and it's just it's it's a ma it's a magical set and like that's the reason why there are so many people on social media who are excited about that that show because we are ever the whole cast is so involved and that's great yeah it was fun it was i got to wear all i was a ca uh, cast of them so um i was an all white if that's even possible i was became whiter <laughs> my hair was like i was wearing like this bleach like had this like white bleach blonde um wig and they got to spray me all day in this like white powdered stuff and wow. I know, and I like I've had. I, it was a wonderful experience. I had a lot of people on social media send me fan art, which is like because I'm the biggest nerd on the planet. I grew up you know, Dungeons and Dragons, playing Magic cards. I still play Magic cards or Dominion, which is an easier game to play. I'm dropping some bombs here, guys. Um, I'm you know, I still a new bomb. I still play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like a druid high elf, <laughs> just so you know. Um, I you know so fan art like I've been I've been watching. I've been, I read fa fantasy novels and sci-fi novels growing up all the time and, and watching different um, illustrators, inter visual interpretations of like famous characters uh, is a big deal. So fan art has been a, is a thing in my life. So when people were tweeting at me fan art of my character, I was like, <gasps> I remember I was with my family in Vancouver and I was showing, I was like, guys, someone made my character on a painting. And I retweeted it and like messaged them and they were really, they couldn't believe that I I was like so excited. And I was like, <laughs> you have no, you have no idea how exciting it is as an actor to have someone Someone draw your face in a character like it's I'm sorry I don't care how famous or big or like, oh, like Hollywood I get I will always be excited when someone makes fan art of me that's just so exciting yeah that's that would there. be so cool the nerd the nerd in me is like just so blown away by it and uh, sci-fi is a great company to work for and uh, I I mean I have I'm the kind of person who goes through magic cards and looks at the characters and goes, I want to play someone like this one day. I'm the person who my dream as an actor is to like be on a horse and have like a high ponytail and a sword and give that like pre-war speech. <laughs> okay, people. And that's as a, as a woman too, that's like, that doesn't often happen. Like, like in history that, that happened like maybe once. So I want to write like an alternate universe where it's like me on a horse. All right. Come on, people, the, today is not the day to die. Blah. <laughs> it's my dream. Like, my dream as an actor is to give that speech. So That would be so cool. And as a woman who's a writer, you could create your own universe. Now, will we be seeing anything sci-fi-ish fantasy from you anytime soon? Uh, well, um, that's a good question. I have another film coming out that I wrote called Sugar Daddy. Not sci-fi, but it, I, I do play the lead of it. It's um, about an up-and-coming singer-songwriter who signs up for SugarDaddy.com to kind of oh. stave off her starving artist <laughs> lifestyle. And she goes down a bit of a rabbit hole of... Uh, self-worth and self-discovery and sex and commodity it's this like femi very feminist interesting challenging movie about how begging the question how a woman is supposed to act so not sci-fi but definitely female uh, intense female flawed character movie um, I have a war movie coming out and I have a 1970s faux documentary coming out but I, I do have a sci-fi movie in my back pocket that I think it's it's sci-fi movies are very high budget so mm -hmm. um, you Unless you're making it post-apocalyptic where it's like just desert, in which case I'll, sh I'll shoot in like Joshua Tree or something. <laughs> um, but I do have a sci-fi movie that I've been working on for the last couple of years. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can say anything about it, but it's um, a post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Because I, 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 I grew up on um, Isaac Asimov and like all those. I'm a, the I'm a, I'm a real nerd. Like this is, a, <laughs> this is like a real situation nerd. Yeah, I, I love... Oh, I, I've always wanted to do a adaptation of a Canadian sci-fi fantasy novel called the uh, Fiona Var Tapestry, which no one's made an adaptation yet. I shouldn't be saying this because <laughs> now y'all are gonna read it and you're gonna be like, "No, I'm gonna pitch this to Lionsgate." So, <laughs> but you should read it. It's um, by Guy Gabriel Guy, and it's he's a Canadian writer, and it's the Fiona Var Tapestry. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. I can't wait to see more from you. Yeah, thanks. And I do know what Sugar Daddy is, not that I was on it. <laughs> and I am so excited and hopefully I'll be seeing you on something on Sci-Fi Channel really soon, as well as your own independent view coming out. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you so much for having me.